In this video, I'm going over the rules for calculating using significant figures. And the first set of rule pertains to multiplication and division. And it's real simple. You just round the answer to the least number of sig figs in the problem. So you round your quotient or your product to the number that or the measurement rather that has the least number of significant figures. Here's a very straightforward example. Let's say you're in the lab and you measure something out to 2.8723 has five significant figures. You just count them. And then you measure 1.6 that has two significant figures. And your calculator gives you this answer here. But what you should record is 4.6 and that is because if you look up here at the sig figs in the problem, 1.6 has the least number of sig figs. And again, the first number is going to be the exact one, and the last number is always that estimated uh, digit. And you'll see 0.59 rounds to 0.6, and that's where the 6 comes from. So let's try this example over here. In your calculators, try 25.95 times 3. So here are your choices, A, B, C, D. In the lab, which would be the most appropriate measurement to record? Oh, okay, so if you look here, you'll see that there's 1, 1, two, three, four significant figures in 25.95 and only one in three. And so your answer better include only one significant figure. And so answer choice D is correct. Now try this example. 25.95 times 2.9. 2.9 has the least number of significant digits. It has two. So which of these answer choices would be correct? If you said D, you got it correct. D is the correct answer because it has two significant figures. By now you're probably wondering which digits of number are significant. So at this point I'm going to go over how we determine whether a number, how many numbers in a measurement are significant. And so the first way, I'm going to put a bullet near it, is that non-zero digits are significant. And so you know, if you look at the number 321.4, 321.4. All four numbers are non-zero, so it's so easy to see that that has four sig digs, significant digits. The second way to determine how many significant digits a measurement has is that zero digits, which fall between non-zero digits, are significant. So here's the example, 2.001. So this zero and that zero are in between non-zero digits, and so therefore each of these digits is significant. So four significant digits. The third way, all trailing zeros are significant in numbers that contain a decimal. So here's an example, 2.000. All trailing zeros, these are trailing zeros, these are actually measured zeros, and they're significant in numbers that contain a decimal. So since this contains a decimal, you know those are significant, so there's four sig digs. For numbers without a decimal, the trailing zeros may or may not be significant. The only way you're going to know is if you use scientific notation. And so I'm going to assume on your lab reports that if you write the number 6,000, I will probably make the assumption that it only has one sig dig. 
uh, you can't be sure unless you write it as 6.00 times 10 to the 3. If you write it as 6.00 times 10 to the 3, I know for sure that there's four sig figs. Um, placeholder zeros are not significant. Example, 0 0.003 has one significant digit. 6,000 has one significant digit. Maybe rewrite it in scientific notation to be sure. Here's some problems to practice. Try 698.56. So they're all non-zero digits, and so there's one, two, three, four, five significant digits. What about 3.05008? That uses the rule that zero digits which fall between non-zero digits are significant. So this zero is in between three and five, those are non-zero, and these two zeros are in between five and eight, which are non-zero. So you have to count all these, all these digits are significant. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six sig figs. Seven point zero zero zero. All measured zero digits are significant. And so since there is a decimal, the trailing zeros are significant. So one, two, three, four, four sig digs. Okay, the next one. The next example, 0 0.0004, is a decimal number, but these zeros serve as placeholders, so they are not significant. And so 0 0.004 only has one significant digit. What about 0 0.00400? These two zeros serve as placeholders, so they are not significant, but these two zeros trail the number four, so they are significant. So these, this number here has three significant digits. 20.0. This zero here trails the decimal, and so each of these zeros is significant. Three significant digits. Why write this zero here if it were not significant? So, we, so the person wrote this zero because it's a significant digit. What about the number 20? With 20 you can't be sure, so you can assume it only has one significant digit. If you wanted to be sure, you'd have to write it in scientific notation. And you could write that as 2.0 times 10 to the 1. And then you could be sure that this zero here is significant. And you could say it had two significant digits. But without writing 20 in scientific notation, you cannot be sure whether it's significant or not. Now practice our rules of multiplication and our understanding of significant, which numbers are significant in a measurement to compute 28.783 times 2.1 using the correct number of significant digits. And so to review those rules, 2.1 has the least number of significant digits, so your answer better have at least two sig figs. And as you'll see, the only answer with two sig figs is 6.0 times 10 to the 1. So this is the correct answer. 6.0 times 10 to the 1.